Hey guys, hope everybody's doing well. Um, I just thought I'd throw together a quick follow-up uh, video to allow you to sort of test what you understand from Mr. Deaver's conversations. In this unit on electricity, we're going to spend just a little time on electrostatics, and you're doing it right now. And then we'll, go, we'll do a little bit with circuits, which are kind of cool if you use computers or play along around electronic devices. We'll take a look at how this stuff works. It's kind of cool. Um, so again, we're going to take a look at static electricity. Static electricity just means static, just means not moving. So we have charges that aren't moving. Here's kind of a goofy cartoon of a guy using babies as balloons. Anyway, uh, so we're going to look at charges that are not really moving around. Now, they are going to move from one object to another, but we're not talking about like in a circuit. So it's going to be sort of basic. This is kind of the weird part. Um, in chemistry, you may have been told certain values for protons, neutrons, and electrons. And that's because in chemistry, you use units like mass in AMU. So you said a proton had a mass of 1, a neutron had a mass of 1, and an electron had a mass of 0. Well, in physics, we have to actually use the real values. Now, we're not going to do much of this, so don't worry about this. Charge is a really bizarre concept. So just like objects have a property known as mass, they also have a property known as charge. The thing is, charge usually remains hidden because you know the charge on a proton for chemistry class was a plus one. Neutrons have no charge, so that's neutral. And electrons have a charge of negative one. But again, those units of positive one and negative one were sort of make-believe units. In physics, they actually have this bizarre unit called a coulomb, and is named after a French guy. And the values of the proton, the actual charge on a proton, is really, really tiny. It's point zero 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 one six or something like that. And they're positive. So these are really bizarre numbers to work with. So don't worry about this. Don't worry about the exponent. It's just a number. You can call it plus one, but the actual value will be different. So we're going to call it plus 1.6 times some big exponent. Electrons are negative. They have the exact same value. It's just they're negative of that number. So positive and negative for protons, electrons, and neutrons have no charge. And you guys knew that. Now, remember, this is the key thing. It's the electrons that move. So when we're rubbing our feet on the floor, or patting your dog on a winter day, or playing with a fluffy cat, or putting on a fleece jacket, it's the electrons that move. The protons do not move. The electrons are able to be scraped out of or added into these outer electron shells. Again, Mr. Eber made note of that. A couple of people asked a really good question. Why would something give up electrons anyway? It has to do with the number of electrons in the valence shell. So in this picture, we have four valence electrons. If there's only one or two electrons out here, they're not held very tightly by the nucleus, and they're able to be scraped away by friction. So if you think back to, like, sodium is number 10, it has two in the bottom, eight in the second, only has one in the third level, so it's really easy to pull that electron out. Um, if it's got seven in there, it's harder to take it out, so something like chlorine will gain that electron. So it's really these valence electrons, how easy. Some materials you can scrape them out, some materials you can't but it's the electrons that move. Um, and again, you've all experienced this. If, if you have a dog or a cat or a fleece, or you rub your feet on the carpet, um, you know it's pretty easy to move electrons around by friction. This, this dog does not even look real. I think that's a real dog, but um, I don't know. It's like a look of fake to me, but anyway. Um, and you've all had this experience. I always tell my classes about when I was a college student, we had carpeted hallways. This is not what the hallways at UConn look like. Um, but I'd always walk down the hallway at UConn, and my feet would get charged up, and if I touch my doorknob, I'd get shocked. This process of building up charge and then discharging it is called grounding. So in the Van de Graaff generator, you stood on a chair, put your hand on there, and the electrons piled into your body. And then when you touch the ground or touch, the, touch another person, the electrons raced out of your body, and they discharge. That's called grounding. Now, John Travolta, this is a pet simulation. It's kind of funny. John Travolta, um, John Travolta is obviously an actor you're probably aware of. He's going to rub his foot on the carpeting, and he rubs his foot back and forth. This carpeting must have materials that have lots of free electrons. And those electrons are not held very tight, so when he rubs his foot, the electrons pop onto his foot. Now you'll notice what are those electrons doing? Well, they don't like to hang out with each other. And we're not going to wait the entire time. If I waited for an hour, these electrons would get as far away as possible spread out all over John voltage to get away from each other. And so he is he's, has extra 
electron he has extra charge so each electron has a charge to it he has like 50 in there so he's building up a lot of charge he can ground or get rid of these discharge these electrons by touching something that's grounded now the question people ask is how come it does, doesn't go back up to the shoes certain materials don't conduct electricity very well so these shoes are made out of rubber and it won't conduct real well you can force electrons in but they won't necessarily come out very quickly but if he touches his hand to a metal doorknob a doorknob is a good conductor so when he touches, the electrons flow out. And you've probably had this experience. You rub your feet on carpeting, you touch your friend, mm -hmm. you pat your dog, mm -hmm. all this stuff happens all the time. So it's something you're probably familiar with. And so this is known as grounding. Um, there's, a, you, there's a clip here from, from uh, Family Guy. It's actually been taken off, probably rightfully so. But uh, Peter discovers the power of the static electricity runs around shocking everything. You can look it up if you want to, but it's off YouTube. So one of the things that pops up, it's very confusing when you first do this, is what's the total charge of five electrons? Well, it's partially because these numbers are so weird. But if you think about an easier question, it's like saying if one dog weighs 50 pounds, how much do five dogs weigh? Well, to get the total, you simply take the weight of one and multiply by how many dogs you have. So five dogs are 50 pounds each, is 250 pounds of dog. We can do the same thing if we say, what's the total charge of five electrons? If I have, if I know the charge of one and I know how many I have, we simply multiply them together. So if I have five electrons, and remember, each electron has this number of, of charge. And again, charge is a bizarre concept, but it's another property of matter. Um, we can say the total charge of five electrons would be 8 times 10 to the minus 19, or 8. It's 5 times 1.6. So again, it's not a big, big deal. Um, this happens all the time when you walk around. Again, when you walk on carpeting in the wintertime, you may pick up electrons. So if eight electrons are transferred from the carpet, the carpet gives up electrons and your body takes them, what's the new charge on you? So this is the equation we use. It's basically saying the total equals the number times the charge on each. But eight electrons came in the my body. Each one has that charge. Therefore, it has a new charge. And again, the thing that throws people off is this, this crappy number. It's a real tiny, tiny value. So it's not very intuitive. If you go back to the example of the dog, the total is simply the weight of one times how many, the charge on one times how many I have. So that's the big thing. We're not going to do a lot with this anyway. Um, so don't worry about that. I just wanted to show you how another way of looking at that process. Okay. Again, if you have questions, just use the uh, use the exit slopes, and we'll try to get back to you with uh, feedback. Okay, thanks.